heading south in Portugal to accept an invitation to discover the country from somebody we've never met before. We're hoping to learn about Portugal and the culture and have an adventure in the process as we drive towards Africa. However, when you're driving around the world, things don't always go to plan. But in Portugal, there's always a way to put it right. The sun is shining, the Atlantic Ocean is on our right, and we are headed south through Portugal in search of an adventure. The geography of Portugal's coastline is so blessed that there are thousands of idyllic beaches and places to surf, and none more famous than Nazaré. Array. This is the place where the world record for surfing the largest towing wave was um, set. It was right here. I think it was 80 foot. It was a Brazilian guy that did it. Can you imagine the face of the wave being 80 foot? The swell today isn't very big, but Nazaré is famous for being a swell magnet due to the offshore canyon. So the waves basically magnify and um, amplify and always are pumping here. There's some beautiful barrels going through. Probably a little bit too good for me, I think. Sure is fun to watch though. Absolutely amazing. Those waves are just stunning, super heavy. It is, this is something of a, a mecca of a surfing location, so to be here and see it in person is, is really special. There's no way we were coming past this part of Portugal without swinging in to see what the locals are doing. Of course, driving around the world isn't just all about surfing and sightseeing. There is work to be done to make overlanding happen and problems to be solved. Problems you expect and plan for, like doing an oil change and routine maintenance in a random car park, and problems you don't plan for. So there have been a few breakdowns recently, not with a Volkswagen for once, but with uh, the camera dying. Focus is pretty good. It's lightweight, it's lighter than the other one. This is the only one they have in stock. It's the demonstration one that's on the shelf. Um, there's no discount. It costs us 500 euros more than it would cost us if we bought it on the internet. But we need it right now, otherwise we can't record. So 500 euros is the price that we pay for being nomadic on this uh, production. What the crap is that? 439 euros and 43 cents in tax. Portugal. You're killing us, 23% sales tax, what's that about? And also Leah's laptop completely decided to um, fail in the middle of us editing an episode right the day before we backed it up. Um, it was almost finished and ready to render but just completely died. New logic board was required to the tune of 650 euros. It's only a couple of years old as well, so thank you very much Mr Apple. And as well as that we've been having gas problems so we haven't had a hot shower 
for a very, very long time. It hasn't been working and we haven't, didn't know why it wasn't working. Um, what a nightmare. We have been to so many it. people to like ask like second opinion, what's wrong with the gas? And lo and behold, this guy from Wales, Chris, how you doing mate? He comes walking over and goes, got problems? And we're like, yep. <laughs> yeah, he had the tool that we needed to um, figure out the problem. So we found out that it wasn't getting enough pressure. The gas wasn't, yeah, there wasn't enough pressure to the shower. Yeah, which basically um, made us think that, and everyone else think that it was the regulator that was at fault. We couldn't find the right regulator anywhere despite going to many different places. We replaced the regulator and nothing. Fortunately, our brand new regulator, which didn't solve the problem, but we had to buy anyway, um, has failed on day one. So uh, it just leaks gas all over the place now. That's safe, isn't it? <laughs> and it's actually a hole in the regulator, which is not good. So, well, I, I think the one that we had on there has been damaged and getting it off, so. By Portugal, this is month seven since we installed our instant hot water shower. But like Leah said, it's never been hot. When the weather was warm, that wasn't such a problem, but winter is here now, and now it needs fixing. This was the third RV specialist in Portugal alone. The difference was that here, finally, people were willing to spend the time to find the problem. So we've um, eliminated the regulator being the issue, and now we're basically trying another bottle of gas and putting it through our entire system to see if that works. Slowly narrowing down the problem, but it's, um, it's an elusive one. Nuno here is um, working late to help us fix the problem like a hero. We'd now tried everything. It wasn't the tank or the regulator. It wasn't the pipes or the hose or the shower itself. After many hours of frustration and elimination, there's only one thing left that it could be. It's the last thing to try. The last thing to try. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I suppose you have a solar molecule. No, I don't have. <laughs> no, I, don't so. I don't have. <laughs> Nuno might not have the solenoid, but the next day, he hooked us up with someone across town who did. Take a shower with it. Finally. Finally, we have a solution. We have hot water, we have a shower. I can't believe it was the solenoid. It was basically a tiny little hole in the middle of the solenoid. The specs were wrong online, um, and so it was just blocking the gas. And now a new solenoid. Boom, hot showers. Yes, upgrade. You are gonna love this. It's hot, hot shower. What the hell? I can't believe it, it's so good. Having proper hot water on demand in the combi is a game changer for off-grid living. We were so grateful to Nuno and the team for staying back late to help us finally fix this problem. <laughs> You're right. You're right. By this point, after months of constantly moving and with the recent problems, we were starting to feel a little burnt out to be honest. But our time in Europe is fast running out, so we are on the move again to meet Miguel, a combi crew member who had invited us to Lisbon, where we would also be receiving some vital documents in the post for Alaska's onward travels to Morocco. A few weeks earlier in Spain, we had jumped through all of the necessary hoops to get Alaska's certified paperwork so that she could travel to Africa with us. The awesome Spanish vet kindly offered to forward Alaska's updated passport to us in Lisbon, but as yet, there was still no sign of it. So in the meantime, Miguel took us to some of his favorite local hangouts. One thing that was obvious straight away is that the Portuguese people are passionate about food. 
especially seafood. At 89 years old and with an unwavering passion, the owner Eduardo still graces his family restaurant to share his customers' smiles. I'm just trying to remember. I've never been to a seafood restaurant that had such a variety of dishes. I'm from an island and there was seafood here that I'd never seen before. Imagine the most beautiful beach in the world with the most beautiful sand and the most incredible water and you dive and you have a feeling. That feeling is what you get when you eat this. It tastes like ocean is the right way to say it. It does taste like the ocean. Being a coastal country, seafood is a nationwide passion, with salted cod being the famous national dish of Portugal. We had lunches with the locals from the neighbourhood in the local football association, a place we would never have been to without Miguel. It was an unforgettable experience and delivered some of the tastiest and certainly best value food that we enjoyed in the entire country. There seems to be no such thing as fast food here in Portugal, with meals spanning many courses and taking many hours too. Meal time is sacred in Portugal, and whenever possible, enjoyed with friends. No, originally I'm from there. We felt very privileged to be able to spend time with Miguel and his friends and learn about Portuguese culture and history over these long lunches. When we were like until the 16th century, we had a, a very big Jewish community. And so uh, because of the Inquisition, then some of them were expelled and the ones who weren't expelled, they had to convert. So in order to somehow maintain their life here, they pretended that they still made the sausages, like it was pork sausages, but actually they made them out of uh, chicken. Yeah. And that was Pratzeta, that's how this was born actually. And that's and they're delicious. Oh, they oh, are. Good. <laughs> good you like them, yeah. At this point, our time in Europe was fast running out. Alaska's paperwork still hadn't arrived. Uh, so, OK, we just found out that the letter was returned to Spain. So now we're going to the distribution and knock on the door and see if they still have it there by a miracle. So let's just try it. Damn it. So Alaska's paperwork um, has been lost in the post. Um, it was getting sent from the vet in Spain to Miguel's house here near Lisboa but unfortunately um, the address was written down wrong. The number of the house wasn't put on there correctly, which is the same thing that happened in New York, actually. Um, it's not our fault. Uh, and so now we're trying to track it down. This could be a disaster because the package has her blood tests, official results, which we need to get her back from Morocco into Europe. And it also has a pet passport, which we need to get out of Europe right now, like literally in the next couple of days. So I don't know what we're going to do here, but this is a disaster. Yeah. Sure, it's, everything's going to be all right, but this is bad news. It's been a bad weather day, but we'll find a way. We tried everything we could to intercept Alaska's passport before it had returned to Spain, but we couldn't. This was now a huge problem. So we have come across a issue. <laughs> um, it seems like Portugal has been, just been like a whole lot of hurdles that we've just had to come across from like the day that we sat, we came into Portugal. It's just been challenge after challenge after challenge. And now this is probably one of the most 
challenging uh, things that we've ever come across so far in this expedition, and that is uh, we've lost uh, Alaska's pet passport, which means that in a few days' time when we're supposed to go across the border to go into Morocco, that she won't be allowed in with us. And I need to get out of the, of the EU, as I'm overstaying my visa, so I need to definitely be out in a few days. Um, Ben can stay longer, so um, that's a good option. That's good, at least, as one of us can uh, stay with Alaska until we get this sorted. But it's a real headache that this has happened, and it's happened so close to us going to another country. We can't leave Alaska here on her own. We can't wait another month um, for her to get her paperwork sorted. This is one of the, the hassles with overlanding and going from country to country and visas and, you know, it's a headache. Being up here in the misty fresh air of Sintra Mountain gave us the time and space to take stock of the situation and weigh up the options. Miguel had kindly offered to allow Alaska to stay with him and his dog Black whilst we went to Morocco, but we'd be gone for months. Or I would stay and track down Alaska's lost passport, which would take four to six weeks. In the meantime, Leah would need to travel on to Africa alone. Surely there had to be a better option. We'll go left and try to find a gas pump uh, in this way. You think we'll make it? Oh, yeah, sure. We'll survive for sure. I'm not saying that we'll go home <laughs> tonight, but... How long have you slept with other people inside of a car? It's been a long time, right? Yeah. So... Miguel, I'm really enjoying your company, but I, I don't want to sleep with you in here. Really? Not, not, not tonight. No bed in here. How can you say that to a combi crew member? <laughs> I suppose that's true. They are. What are you going to do? I think you should call the vet in Spain and see if they can transfer the details somehow onto a new passport for her. Get a new passport for her and see if they can just transfer the, the details of the blood tests. Now I'm in the Portuguese vets uh, trying to get a Portuguese passport for Alaska. Um, the only thing that's holding us back is some information about her last rabies vaccine which uh, is in an envelope on its way to Spain as well. So we are literally two days left on our visa. Um, we're a long way from the African continent and we have a lot to do to get Alaska to come with us. How cool is this? We really couldn't have done all of this, sorted out all these issues without the help of Miguel. If it wasn't for him, it would have been this already hectic and complicated situation would have been far more complicated. Um, just being able to speak the language, um, him being able to communicate with people in Portuguese has helped a lot because I don't know what we would have done without him. So 
really, really kind for him to be so welcoming and inviting and helpful. He's a, he's a legend. I think the guys are back from the vet, so hopefully all went well. And we have Alaska's passport. <laughs> How'd you go? Yeah. Good. Uh, <laughs> I'm ready to sleep. So good? Did you got, get it? Got a yeah. Yay. She's got her third passport. Her third passport? Yeah. Thank gosh for that. That's because now officially Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, she's Portuguese now. <laughs> So Brexit can't can't stop Alaska. <laughs> she can go wherever she wants. Alaska. So that's the good news. Thanks. I'm guys. exhausted by all of these problems. Thank gosh, it's all over. Hopefully everything else goes smoothly. Let's see what Morocco has to say about it. Yeah. You did it. Yeah, you did it. That's the Africa. <laughs> when we first arrived in Portugal, we were really excited to discover the country. We had so many pins on our Combi Crew interactive map for places to explore, and we were told that Portugal is a van life paradise of Europe. Unfortunately, we were only able to scratch the surface of Portugal as we bounced from problem to problem. However, we might not have been able to see as much of the country as we would have liked, but whilst working through these problems, we saw a side of Portuguese people that we might have otherwise missed. And for that, and their hospitality, we will be eternally grateful. Yeah. Now, with time almost up, we are racing against the clock in a mad rush to escape Europe. Everything about Combi Life is about to change once again, as we prepare to leap to a new continent. Next stop, Morocco. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is Africa over there. But that is a story for next time.